And now, the Bellhops Tabletop, where we look back and summarize what's happened since we were last here, what games hit our tables. Every week, we like to take a look back at the games we played and the events we've attended and other cool gaming stuff going on. You can catch the blog version of This Week in Review at tabletopbellhop.com under On Our Tabletop. All right, I got a ton of games this week. Um, I've got Imhotep, Enemint Domain, Tyrant Cylinder, Castillo, Bonanza, Kingdom, King Domino, Funko vs. Harry Potter, Azul, and Goku all played this week, most of those multiple times. All righty. <laughs> Are we, uh, how are we, uh, since there's so many games to talk about this week, we're going to try and keep it a bit shorter than usual. If you do want some more info on these thoughts, head over to the blog and check out the full Tabletop Gaming Weekly article. Yeah, I'm going to try to keep it short. it will be relatively short. I'll still, still keep the content on here. So on Monday uh, night, Tom Barker came over, longtime friend. Uh, him and Deanna and I played a handful of games. First was Imhotep. Tom had never played it before, and I thought he'd dig it. He likes those thinky filler types of games. Tom likes heavier games now and then. Since he hadn't played it, we used the A side. Really simple. Tom liked it. And in his own words, this is a good little game. Well, there really haven't been any missteps yet with this little Egyptian gem. <laughs> no, not at all. So far, we haven't had anyone not like it, actually, I, which I hadn't actually put together. Yeah, it's been going well. Uh, up next, we played Tyrants in the Underdark. Now Tom's a big deck building fan and a D&D player, so I thought this would go well. Uh, what was interesting about this one was how much more promoting all three of us did to our decks during the game. So that's a unique mechanic in this game where you can move can cards from your deck and put them aside to score points at the end. Deanna, in particular, had a ridiculous number of cards in her circle by the end of the game. Now, one of the things this meant is that the area majority scoring of the board wasn't as important as previous games, which I thought was neat. Now, I think the main cause of this was we were using the draft deck this game. Now, was this your first three-player session with it, or no? No, this wasn't. We had played three-player with Sean Hamilton before. Okay. The first time I played was three-player as well. So, yeah, we played three-player a few times. Um, what I, yeah, I played four once. The only thing I haven't played it yet is two players. Okay. Now, the last game we played with Tom was Eminent Domain. I've been playing a lot of this because I am trying to get to learn and review the Escalation expansion. The problem is Tom hadn't played this game for forever. Um, like, I don't even know how many years ago, back when it came out, when I first got the game. So we stuck to the basic rules. Now, this time we did play three players. So all the other plays of Eminent Domain I've had recently have been four players. And with four players, this game's a race. Like, it is over quick. Like, you're trying to build an engine but you're lucky if you actually get to run it. And man, that changed with three players. That was the biggest thing. This game goes on significantly longer with three and not in a bad way because not only build your engine and run it, but you have some time to tweak your engine to possibly get some more points. So at this point, I got to say eminent domain, thumbs up three players and eh, with four. And, and I think we only confirm that fact, in fact, with what comes up next. <laughs> Yeah, because Friday night, Deanna was away at the Pinery a Camping Ground with the family. Uh, instead of streaming Gloomhaven, Kat, Tori, uh, sorry, Tori's little brother, and I played some more Eminent Domain. Uh, the first game, again, we stuck to the basic rules because I realized someone pointed out on something we had posted that we screwed up a rule in Gloomhaven, of course, or uh, in Eminent Domain. Not a big one. Uh, it, it was a minor extreme play where we weren't allowing people to look at the other side of the cards when they use the uh, search action. Uh, we, which, discovered oh, yeah, that, we discovered that on BGA. That's what it was. Yeah, it was playing it on Board Game Arena. I realized you could look at it. So it wasn't a big deal, but I wanted to make sure we were playing with proper rules because, for one, we were streaming it. So I wanted to make sure we are playing the proper way to the stream. Um, the interesting thing about that game, though, was, again, we played three players. And, again, Tori and Kat agree with me. They're like, wow, yeah, this is better with three players. We got more stuff happened more we were able to do more we bought more technology cards the game wasn't over too quick no i uh, that first game was really quite quick uh in fact with uh, without the teaching i think it was actually under 45 minutes wow. when i did the edit uh but as someone who was watching it it didn't feel rushed it didn't feel missing it felt like a really good game yeah that, that is the time on the box so that may, means we managed to hit the box time of 45 minutes mm -hmm. Now, after the first game, we did break out Escalation. That was their main goal for the night, was to play with Escalation. We played two games. Uh, first one was just the new tech cards and the new rules and the building fleets. And the second, we used the scenario rules. Now, the basic game changes and everything uh, seem to be getting better with each play. Uh, this is definitely starting to show itself as a game that records, rewards knowing the cards. 
and multiple plays. And man, that is showing even more with each concurrent play. The the learning the different tech cards and what they do and why you want them is huge. Um, a highlight for our first game, though, was seeing each of us try a very different strategy and seeing that each of those seemed to be valid because we had a pretty close final score. Yeah, no, system knowledge is super important, and I don't think that can be stressed enough in this game, really. While not required, uh, I would say it is certainly an mm -hmm. advantage. And if you've got that all three players knowing the cards, it just energizes that game. It really makes yeah. for a much more exciting game. It's almost got that, that chess feel, right? Like where you need people of a equal level to play it, to really enjoy it, yep. to, to have a really memorable, good game. Now, our second game, we broke out the scenarios. And I have mixed feelings, mostly for because of what we're just talking about. Because with the scenario part, uh, I want to talk a little more about this and the other stuff because this is new to us. And it changes the starting state of the game. So everyone ends up, with a scenario card and there's different ways you can draft them. That doesn't really matter. And that's going to give you a different starting deck, starting technologies, and sometimes starting world. Sorry. It's always, always a different starting world, different starting technologies, and sometimes a different starting deck than everyone else, which adds asymmetry, which everyone who listens to this knows I should love asymmetry. I do love asymmetry in games and I have a feeling I'm going to love it in eminent domain. Eventually. Because I felt like this game, we just were not ready for it. Like, we wasted way too much time just trying to find the stuff we were supposed to start with because we don't know the technologies that well. So we're like, do you see this? Do you know where that one was? Like, it took us time to find them. And then when we did find them, and I found it really difficult to figure out how I should have been playing my deck. Like, the two starting technologies it gave me weren't, like, opposed to each other, but I couldn't seem to get the engine to use those cards well. Like, I, I love the idea of the strategy cards, but man, I like the rule book tells you, make sure you played multiple games before you introduce introduce scenarios. But every game tells me that, right? And 99% of the time, you're like, ah, we're board gamers. We played lots of games. Let's just throw it in. Now, nah, in this case, I think the rule book was right. I, I, I don't recommend using strategy cards until you are very confident that all of the players at the table already have a firm grasp of the other elements of not only the base game, but also the new stuff escalation adds. So all in all, we're just, we just keep picking up, piggybacking the same idea where, you know, when it comes to eminent domain, system knowledge, system mastery is key to any sort of advancement within the game and, and you know, playing, mm -hmm. playing of the game. Yeah, this is definitely not a one and done. Like if you are looking for a bang, we're going to play and have a great time and then not play the game for a few more months, this is not the game for you. This is something you're going to want to get and play multiple times. Now, the good thing is because it's a 45 minute time, every time I break this game out, we play more than once. It's because there you can do that, right? You can get in two, three games. And I got to say, it's been really nice playing the same game repetitively in a short period of time and not having to relearn the rules in between. Uh, Friday night, we finished off with a very quick game of King Domino. I taught this to Tori and Kat because they were going to be at Comic-Con on Saturday, and I thought it would be a good game to show off the con and they hadn't played it um i still dig it they dig it uh this is another one of those games where they were by the end of the game tori was like "Ooh, this might be a good game for my mom yeah no it's it's a fun easy to play easy to learn game and with the various different scoring options you can tune the yep. game for more or less experienced players Now, while Tori and Kat were doing demos and raising money at Windsor Comic Con on Saturday, I was hosting our monthly game night at Easy Mode, or Bits and Boards Night. Uh, this event started off with a three-player game of Tyrants of the Underdark. Uh, at the start of the event, it was kind of lightly attended. I think a lot of people were at Comic Con. Uh, so it was just people who had played the game before, which was nice. Uh, in this game, we tried out the elemental deck for the first time. And I gotta say, I dig it because this adds in that mechanic that everyone knows for star realms where card powers go off when you play other cards with the same aspects on them. So it's interesting. That's the only deck with, uh, out of the whole set that has a cascade ability. Yep. Yeah, it is. It, which is weird because each of the decks, like the, the one deck has a, a penalty card and a defense from that penalty card. Each deck introduced to the game. Now, this game, I went heavy promotion strategy and ended up with a ridiculous pile of cards in my inner circle. If you check the blog post, you can actually see a patch picture of this. It looks like a magic deck. It's insane. Uh, overall, I'm digging tired to the other dark. The more I play, the more I'm glad to see there doesn't seem to be one way to win, which is nice. Excellent. 
Now, next, I taught a game of Bonanza. Uh, this was a group of new players and old pros. That game always goes over well. I'm pleased to say the new players were negotiating like pros by the end of the first round. Bean! <laughs> Gotta love Bean. Uh, finished off Saturday's event with a four-player game of Bastille. This is one I will be talking about more as time goes on. Uh, this is another game that rewards repeated plays. Now, I've already mentioned it. The, the board's awesome. It looks aesthetically awesome. It's so easy to read. I love the symbols. But, man, the end game scoring and what you should be spending your turns on and how often you should be upgrading is so opaque. Uh, which citizens you, you should buy. This was really evident because two of us had played before and two were new, and the two of us had played before, like, crushed the two new players. This is another eminent domain effect, we almost could call it at this point, where you got to play it multiple times, and the people who do are going to do better than new players. Which It's always interesting to see which games you can sit down and... Uh... And just play, you know, the rules are all on the cards, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then which games where you just need to know what's going on. Yeah, and this is definitely one. Like, um, I was told that this is a hidden gem by Queen Games, and I'm starting to see why. This is not going to win anyone over on a first play. It's just not that kind of game. For the era of one and done, which is what we're in right now as far as board games are concerned, games like Bastille are just not going to make it. Now, if you're a player who likes games where you can master them and learn them and memorize the cards in the decks and card count and get into the higher strategies, this may be a game for you. <clears throat> now, this brings us to Sunday. Sunday, I spent all day at Windsor Comic Con doing demos, raising money for Extra Life. We already talked about this. Uh, went well, raised over 200 bucks, which is awesome. Big thank you to the CG Realm, because they donated two games for us to raffle, one of which was that Harry Potter game I reviewed earlier, and that got a lot of people to the table. That was awesome. That was a great incentive for people to donate, so thanks, Jeremy, for that. Yeah, no, it's when, when you've got a game like that, especially one that people cannot get their hands on, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a big way to, to bring people in. What's funny is some of the other Funko vendors came over and entered just so they could get a copy to have at their booth, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Uh, during the event, Jeff Seuss, patron of the show and in our chat room right now, we're doing demos all day. I did a couple demos of Azul, as well as teaching quite a few kids how to play Go Cuckoo. The big draw, though, was that Funko Pop Harry Potter game, and I just told you all about that one, so I'm not going to repeat it here. Uh, I got to admit, there was not a lot of time at the con when that game wasn't getting played, except right at the beginning of the day where we hadn't really figured it out. If the game was being played, people would gather around and get in line to play again. That, that game drew attention. All right. Well, how about a look ahead? What do you have planned for the coming week? Uh, this Saturday is our Level Up with Extra Life charity RPG event at the CG Realm. So I'm looking forward to playing some RPGs. Uh, if we have enough players there, I might run something. But right now, I think I'm just going to fill in holes if there are any. Uh, the week after that, though, I'm going to be prepping for the Great Canadian Board Game Blitz, uh, making sure I'm up on my rule knowledge before we get to that tournament. Uh, were you not doing WWE, or was that somebody else wrestling like I, WWE? Though? You know what? There's The problem is not enough people have signed up on the Facebook event, and we have no idea how many people are going to go. Uh, and I don't want to steal people from the tables that already don't have enough players, because I hadn't actually created WWE, or sorry, WWW, Worldwide Wrestling. No, yep, we yep. either get, get Nathan in trouble if we call it <laughs> WWE. Uh, I didn't actually put it as an event. So I am going to be there, and if there's a flood of people, I'll run it, but if there isn't, I'll sit at someone's table to, so that to fill their table. Alrighty. Uh, 